Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I'm going to have the opportunity today to take a part and uh, do an internal first look at a Cast King reel. This is the Cast King Sharky 3 bait feeder reel. The initial impressions are it's very nice. It's a 10, 10, to one, 10 plus 1 ball bearing reel. It's uh, got a nice case design, nice cosmetic uh, touch to it with the, the black and the red uh, access points. Very smooth operating reel. It is a bait feeder so it does allow you to drift chunks as well as live line uh, fish. You do that by moving the, the switch below that will allow the spool to run out line without constantly having to flip the bale. And uh, when you turn your handle that resets the bait feeder mode, locks in the, uh, the spool and then you fight the fish by your tension that you have on a drag and dust adjuster above. Well, let's get started with this. Um, they didn't send me a, uh, a schematic with this reel. That's a little bit unfortunate. We'll have to do this one kind of, well, by intuition. So we're going to start by taking off the spool. Under the spool we have uh, drag washers, so we can take an inside look at those while we have that spool off. That uh, spool has a uh, little four-cornered ring clip that's holding it in. We're going to open that up. Remove the clip and just get a peek inside. And yes, we have carbon fiber uh, drag washers in there. And to those of you that know a little bit about this type of a reel or that type of a setup, carbon fiber uh, washers have an, an optional um, grease or, or no grease. In this case, this manufacturer greases those. You do not need to grease them. If you do, uh, this one looks a little bit overloaded, which is not unusual for something coming out of the factory. But uh, they generally tell you on a carbon fiber drag washer to go ahead and to um, remove the uh, excess grease so that you don't get uh, a lot of slip going on with those. Carbon fiber by nature are not uh, um, absorbent, so when you put grease on those, typically it, uh, it serves no purpose. You want to use grease on leather washers or the uh, fabric washers, as those uh, you need to maintain flexibility and the grease helps do that. We have a through screw which locks in the handle. That's the only way you're getting that handle out. So uh, make sure that uh, you don't try and turn that handle backwards as a, uh, as a way to do this. Just checking the casing on this. It appears that the case goes up. So that means we have to remove a clip here to get the top end off. There's a little C-clip or there should be a little C-clip right here. Be careful with this if you lose that C-clip well. Going to have a little bit of trouble there. Generally what I like to do is use like a razor knife and walk that clip up as opposed to trying to stretch that over the side. This is uh, not an unusual setup. Quantum, for example, has that. And just be careful if you're using that razor knife. You don't want to kind of slice yourself up in the process. So as you can see, I got the one side out of the groove already. Let's go ahead and put that second side up. We'll bring this up now. And once you can kind of grab it, just walk it up. Up and off. Sometimes easier said than done. If you tried to wedge this one out like a C-clip, well, you probably would shoot it if you could do that. And you'll notice I'm not wearing a glove. I'm not ex expecting any dirty greases or anything to, to get me here. So that's the the clip we've been working on right there and uh, put that in a safe place. When I do my real repair, I, I do use a parts tray and I do put little pieces and parts in there like that. This whole sleeve now should slide right off. It does. Since we don't have a uh, schematic, it's a good recommendation to take pictures while I'm doing that with this camera here. Next off was two shim washers and then our click ratchet. Now we have a single screw 
that's going to hold your rotor nut on. It's going to keep it from slipping backwards as you turn the reel. And then we have a nut that appears to be a 12 millimeter. And this one you can get with a box wrench. Point of note, this one is reverse threaded so that when you go to take this off, you take it off in a clockwise manner. And then we can remove the rotor. Underneath we have what's probably a very traditional uh, anti-reverse system. However, this one does have the anti-reverse override on it which is a, a feature that you're not seeing on a lot of reels these days. And to those of you that enjoy that feature, well, uh, this is a positive selling point to that. Let's get into the body then and see what's going on here. First up, we would remove this bump cap. That's going to show you that there's another screw hiding under here. So we have one, two, three, four screws that are holding the side plate on. Well, in order to get that side plate off, we're going to also have to take this swing arm off for the bait feeder. So if you were servicing this reel, I mean, we're doing this as a let's look inside video, but if you were servicing this reel, you would pretty much do the same at this point. And uh, so much of it would just be a matter of getting the pieces and parts off. So if you like these kinds of videos, I would ask you to consider subscribing to my channel here. I post all kinds of videos, and some of them happen to be uh, product reviews, although the majority of them are about servicing a fishing reel, taking them apart, cleaning them up, getting them back fishing again. And it's a do-it-yourself channel that's trying to show you how to do that because I can't service all the reels in the world, and I'm not interested in serving all the fishing reels in the world. I want you to do it, and I want to uh, show you how to do that, so that's the channel. So if you like that, please subscribe. And if you do subscribe, if you uh, hit that notification button, you'll see all the videos I post, and I post an awful lot of these, so that uh, it'll give you a chance to see the ones that you might like to do and make a decision on some of the others if you want to learn a little bit more about a particular reel or if you uh, are just curious about how a reel is made, how it comes together, how it comes apart. Well, what I'm doing here is I'm removing the four screws that hold the side plate in. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm putting those screws on my table. And the reason I'm putting them on my table, I want to make sure that all of these screws are the same. As interestingly as that sounds, they're not always the same. And in some cases, the, uh, there's a short screw or a long screw, and you need to identify where that one goes when it comes time for reassembly. This little guy's giving me a problem here. It's a flat blade screwdriver, flat blade screw, kind of machine set. And it's just giving me a little trouble grabbing it. All right, well, all of those screws appear to be the same. And when I take pieces and parts off, they go in the parts tray. In a little corner room, just so I know where they belong. Well, this is the inside look we've been uh, going for here in, in this part of the review. This case should just separate now. Okay, well, there still seems to be a little resistance in trying to get this out. And that would suggest to me that this cap needs to be removed. Well, if you look at the cap, there's no clip or anything holding it here, which means something's probably hiding under this rubber band here. So let's take that off. Yep, there we go. So there's a silver clip here that's holding that bottom cap on. And I think if you were going to go service this wheel, you'd have to remove this in order to get to the, the rear drag washer. So remove that clip. Then in my parts tray, we should be able to remove the button now. And now we should be able to remove that extended bump guard, which we are. Well, that leaves us with the case. That should come off now. There. 
Or here's the inside look that we've been uh, trying to get to. Bait trip mechanism. If you're working on this thing, it has a spring. It attaches to here in the bottom of the case. It also has a secondary spring up top here. The uh, bait trip mechanism is going to work in and out. You'll see the little angles on the main gear, which is going to trip that out of bait feeder mode. We have a traditional crosswind block below. Crosswind gear driven off the back of the main gear. Bearing on left and right side. Bearing up top here. At least one. We haven't taken it apart. At least one plus the anti-reverse bearing. So overall, a solid and dependable design in a bait feeding reel. So I hope you've enjoyed that inside look. Let's show you how to close that up then. You're going to take your plate and just simply bring that back over the top. Make sure that your case is secure. Grab those four case screws that go next. And if you have a question on this reel or any reel in particular, and uh, maybe you'd like to know a little bit more about it, well, if you uh, leave that question in the comments section, I'll be happy to, uh, to try and answer that question for you. And if I, uh, if I don't know the answer, I'll try and direct you where I can. Special shout out to Paul over at Casking. He was the one that uh, uh, made this kind of possible by sending me the reel and asking me to kind of do a look at it. And I appreciate that. And I hope that uh, you've learned something from this particular video. All right, well, I'm not going to take the time to do all of this on camera, but we will close this up and reassemble it and get it back out there fishing. We'll do a little bit of an extended look in terms of the uh, performance on, of this in the actual fishing environment. And I'll report back to you what I find. So I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, if you did, please like it. If you want to see more, again, please subscribe. And to all that are our first responders and essential personnel who have been keeping us safe during the pandemic, thank you for everything that it is that you do. And to everybody, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. And have a great day.